in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Tim O'Connor as Elliot Carson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington. James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Adrian van Leiden has found her final resting place. And now it is left to the living to face the harsh reality of her death. Only one person knows the exact circumstances surrounding that death. Knows that Eddie Jacks has been wrongly charged with Adrian's murder. Betty Cord. What she does with that knowledge will not only determine the course of her life, but of all those close to her. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. For my sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Please. It's all right, Betty. It's all right. Please take me away from here. I can't, not now, I just can't. Oh. Oh. You all right? You want me to get Dr. Rossi? No. Well, then talk to me. Not now. Now, Betty. Why did you come? Because I couldn't stay away. Oh, that's no answer. It's the only one I can give. But you hardly knew her. Yeah, I know. But my grandfather, it was just something I couldn't avoid. What happened back there? Oh, how could you miss it? Well, why did it happen? Now, that's a pretty stupid question. Well, well humor me and answer it. I want to go home. Why you, Betty? I could understand grandfather or... or... It's Stephen. Yeah, or Stephen. They were close to her. But you weren't. But the fact that she took my husband away from me, there's a certain bond in that. Betty. Well, what do you want me to say? The truth. Were you at the Peyton house that night? No. Did you see Adrian before she died? No. Well, then why are you acting like this? No, I never saw her. I never saw her or anyone in that house. You talked me out of it, remember? I tried. Unsuccessfully, I never went there. Never. I took a walk. I did. I did. I took a walk. All right. Slow I down. Did. Slow down. Slow down. Uh, Okay, you took a walk. Today, brief. I feel a bit ghoulish waiting for you here like this. Huh. Uh, Martin, could we have a moment alone? I have no secrets from Weber. 
I deposited $50,000 in the name of Norman and Rita Harrington. Here's the confirmation from your Boston bank. We'll keep in touch. Does that mean I'm to stay here in town? For the moment. Martin, I... Ah, uh, there's no time to buy your trade bill. Call me, then. What now, sir? Everything comes to him who waits. Oh, would you like me to get you something? No. I guess I'll go polish the car, then. Stay where you are. It's Mr. Jack, sir. I tried to keep him out. What are you doing here, Let Jack? Let go of me. I, I tried, Mr. Pickett. That'll be all, Mary. I said, what are you doing here, Jack? Well, I... Mr. Jack is our guest this time. You and me, that was the deal. What deal? Will you put him on a short leash? Go away, Weber. Go away. I owe you something. Just give me one reason, Jax. One reason. I'll be out in the hallway, sir. Why did we have to do it here? It's safer. How about the middle of the town square? Does this house disturb you? It must be a strange feeling for you to enter through the front door. Let's get on with it. Produce. Hmm. Your turn. Swell. Swell. You demand $50,000 for Rita and Norman. You've got it. I think you would find a more appropriate expression than that. Well, you boxed me into a corner. Oh? This makes you look like a kindly old grandpa just putting a little cream in the kid's coffee. But that paper I gave you makes me out to be a... A hired killer. And an incompetent one at that. Let's talk. We just did. Now, you want Harrington's scalp, but that thing has got my name on it, too. Fortunes of war, Mr. Jax. In future, if you have a future, choose your associates more carefully. That paper won't be worth 50 cents unless I back it up, unless I testify that Les Harrington hired me to kill you. You will. Protection. That's all I want. Some guarantee. We've done our business. Now, look! Mr. Payne, are you all right? I may not be able to stop Weber another time. Harrington's on my tail. He wants that note back today. And if he doesn't get it, he knows that something's up. You leave Harrington to me. But what do I do in the meantime? Send him off. How? That's your problem. What do I tell him? That's your stock in trade, Jax. The glib tongue, the sincere facade. Use them. Use everything you have. And you may come out in one piece. Yes, of course she has, but they should be happy visitors. Yes, sir. Oh, listen, don't, uh, please don't bring up the subject of her father, will you? Well, is there anything else to talk about these days? Betty. Don't worry. Dr. Rossi. Dr. Rossi, pick up on line three. Hello, Rita. Betty. I wasn't expecting you. Well, I can only stay a second. How do you feel? Oh, they're spoiling me rotten. Well, it's about time. Here. Thank you. Was there something special you wanted? No, these are fine. Well, if there is anything else, I'd be happy to... Smuggle it in? 
Sure. No, never mind. I don't want to get you into trouble. What is it? I've been begging them for a radio ever since I got in here, but Dr. Rossi won't let me have one. Well, I'm sure you've got enough on your mind without an every hour on the hour report of the world situation. Well, it must be fun thinking about your baby and, and planning and, and everything. I guess I did put you on the spot. Well, I can take it. Then tell me what's happening. But it upsets me all the more not to know. Everybody comes in here to try and cheer me up, and all it does is scare me, because nobody will talk. They're not allowed to. So I just sit here dreaming up worse and worse things. Well, somebody just tell me the truth. About your father? Of course. Well, how much do you know? <laughs> Nothing. Except that Stephen's gotten him out on bail. You don't think Stephen would take the case, would you, unless he thought he was innocent? I mean, he has to be innocent. He couldn't kill anyone. I don't see how anybody could possibly believe that my father could... They found him there beside... beside her body. That doesn't prove anything. He's not a killer, Betty. He's, he's a con man. And he's not a very good one, either. Well, he'd get somebody else to do it. He, all he can do is tell jokes and play card tricks and thump on a piano. Why, he's just a... Why are you defending him to me? I thought... Gotta go. Oh, Rita, I'm sorry. I, I came here to cheer you up, but, um... Well, I went to Adrian's funeral today, and I guess it upset me more than I thought. But there's some good stories in here. I'm sure they'll cheer you up. Thank you, Betty. I want to get a copy. Betty, Betty, what is it? Calling Dr. Fielding. Calling Dr. Fielding. 